Zach from Gravel Bike California here in Ukiah, ready to take on the unpredictable action here at Low Gap. Now, the Grasshopper Series has been around for over 25 years, introducing and helping gravel grow as a sport. At the same time, today's ride is a little bit over 40 miles, which is on the shorter side of a grasshopper, which is maybe why I chose it. <laughs> or maybe I just like saying maybe. Let's roll. <laughs> When you ask how gravel has grown so quickly, a big part of that answer is Miguel Crawford, who's been a return guest of GBC Live, introducing thousands to unique places to ride in Northern California, gaining the interests of pro riders from all disciplines of racing into the fold, making the grasshoppers a one of a kind and we started these for 10, 12 years, there weren't any other events. Like, this is just what people did unless they were racing cross or mountain bikes or road. So, you know, you know, I think some people are still gonna use these early ones to get ready for the summer, but like, you know, it's accessible from the Bay Area and a lot of people could come up for the day. And so, you got mountain bikers, you got road bikers, you got the new gravel riders and everybody's just gelling. It's just awesome. Yeah, it's a big party. I started with a group ride that was 10 minutes from my house in Occidental and that's kind of how they started and then now all of a sudden they're sold out like when I was supposed to be at team camp and then now I went to get in and it's just sold out. So I had to text Meg and be like, hey man, is there any way you can do me a favor and let me in? Like now they're a huge thing and I think they definitely help uh, Sonoma County Cycling and the whole gravel scene as a whole, they're pretty well known. So is today gonna be fun or is it gonna of be Of course it's gonna be fun. I mean, riding bikes is fun, that's why we do it. I mean, we're here so everyone's a little nervous because you don't know what's gonna happen. And I think that this is a great way to have it be a great training day, but like a little extra pressure. Yeah, it's a lot, one a month, but uh, I'm, looking for, I'm looking forward to it. Each one's different, they get a little bit longer, then we throw a mountain bike one in the middle, then we have a couple really big ones at the end, so have that kind of fitness goal of people, for people, so. Looking at the low gap route, your fitness goals better be high as it gets serious after the neutral rollout to the start. There's not a lot of time to warm up as you launch into the steepest climb of the day, averaging 8% over 3.8 miles. With a short reprieve, followed with a little more climbing, you'll soon hit your highest speeds of the day, descending from the peak of Ore Springs Road. It's mainly flat the rest of the way on pavement, punctuated by a brief climb as you turn off-road onto low gap with rollers the next nine miles. Just as the surface improves, the main climb on dirt may hit you harder than the one on the road, averaging 7.7% over three miles. It's all downhill from here, but the last eight miles to the finish are challenging in a different way. The descent does have a lot of holes. Some of them are like this big but you just don't go in them. So bunny hop them uh, or look really far ahead would be my best advice to anybody that ever comes here. <laughs> all in all, these 43 miles with over 5,700 feet of climbing definitely punch above their numbers. Just under a two hour drive north of the Golden Gate Bridge, Ukiah sits as the county seat of Mendocino, named after the indigenous Pomo meaning for Deep Valley. Everyone was looking to stay warm as we rode out of Ukiah High School with temperatures still lingering around 40 degrees. Getting to the starting line early was nice, but it didn't take long till everyone packed it in. And as Mig gave final instructions, Three, two, one, go. We're off. Yeah, venga, 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 venga. Looking good. Needless to say, it was a fast start, as it was hard to stay together with a group of this size. The first couple of minutes went quick, but crossing over Ackerman Creek really dropped the hammer on putting your climbing legs on. 
The grind is real, with the first mile graded as the toughest. And it felt strange having this much space, so much so that I thought I was hallucinating. Oh, never mind. The climb felt never ending, and it was hard to judge if there was ever a peak. But while the tree cover started blocking our views, it did signal the end was near, with groups coming back together. Gotta catch back home when I can. As we started to see some smiles as the pitch let up. How are you doing so far? Pretty rough. We're having fun. Don't worry, I think it's probably the only hell of the day, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought bikes were supposed to be fun. And uh, yeah, we'll see how I feel. Oh. What mile are we at? I think uh, 39, it's the All downhill right. sprint. Don't worry. Nobody was buying my lies. As this downhill reprieve lasted only a couple of minutes. And while we transitioned to climbing towards the highest point of the day, we were at a pace-friendly 5%, allowing everyone to group back together, with Lauren Cantwell graciously allowing me to get in the way while filming on her way to the podium. Now, if you're a big fan of science, for the next five miles, you'll have a lot of fun with Newton's Law. But remember to keep rotational kinetic energy in check And while you're taking in the views, also keep in mind to stay to the right of the... as this absence of a center line creates some interesting angles attacking this descent. As the road flattens out, we made our way into the redwoods. And while we expected freezing temps stuck at the bottom of this tree canopy, everyone continued to grind through with people constantly adding to our group, we knocked off miles at a good clip, trying to keep up while fidgeting with my rear camera to work, but coming across this little farmerish pasture, you could ring the bell for being the last opening we'd see for a while. The shade unwelcomed us back to another 2K of paved climbing and seeing inaugural Mountain Bike Hall of Fame inductee Jackie Phelan crush it helped move our legs. The pit stop signaled the turn onto low gap. And while I got water and my camera running again, I don't know if my eagerness to hit this dirt matched others. Seeing how I just chewed out my hand two days ago and was tenuously using my shoulder as a joint from this two weeks earlier. So maybe riding this dirt wouldn't put me in the Good Decisions Hall of Fame. The only thing with consistency over this first nine miles of dirt was its inconsistency. At some parts, people could just flow by to others navigating muddy ruts that thankfully weren't soggier with also a lot of in-between of rocky bumpiness. Early assessment. Don't do this if you just had a root canal. This is teeth chattering. You could see a lot more footprints the deeper you went on low gap. As the roads started claiming people's liveliness in a number of ways. And while there was help for the most severe situations, Unfortunately, the moto support got pressed into duty. And for all my fiddling with my rear camera, it ended with my battery cover coming off. So there goes another Oscar. That didn't mean everyone wasn't rocking it, as it was a beautiful day to be out. And a good part of the downhill rollers was fun. But passing this turn of the century home signaled that our last big uphill exploit had begun. The pitch was steep enough that you were bordering on keeping a tempo, making this effort the definition of a slog. 
overturned vehicles, didn't instill confidence that this was going to be a smooth experience. But at least we hit some of the best dirt of the day on this portion. With no peak in sight, you just had to trust in the process that you'd run out of atmosphere at some point. And the last feed zone signaled the top was near. As riders started emerging from the trees, as having views of open space felt like a payoff right before the final phase begun. The descent started with two miles of tree cover. And while you might call it bumpy, it's smooth compared to later. The sunlight exposed the dried ruts, making me envy the mountain bikes that would pass. But the scenery helped make up for that. This hairpin felt like something Escher would draw, but it was all about letting it loose after that. And with my series of maladies and all, my body didn't feel as riveted as expected and even gave a natural smile for the cameras. Dropping your chain towards the bottom isn't preferred, but boy was I glad to see those stripes. And I was not alone, as the last kilometer breezed on by, glad to not be sprinting the finish line, because I don't know why, as the right to chill at the end was earned. Everyone packed into the park after, and who wouldn't be happy, as Mad Fritz Brewery was a worthy reward. Although Luke Lamperty, Brendan Witz, and Alex Wild on the men's side, and Kate Courtney, Maude Farrell, and Lauren Cantwell took home a bit more hardware than us. So to make up for it on the ride back, we made our required pilgrimage to the new location of the Russian River Brewing Company, topping off our trip in proper fashion. Well, after all the hype, I'm so glad to finally get a grasshopper in. Low gap, even though it was 40 miles, there was a lot of punch to that 5,700 feet. Still, with the pace and everything involved, I still feel like I've got room to ride. The descent, sure, I'll work on that next time. But I'd love what Grasshopper threw at us, and I'll be back for more. Thanks, Mig. If you want more gravel, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can find all of our gravel guides or even support us on Patreon or our shop so we can bring you more from the state of dirt. <laughs>